Your doctor is lying. It's not healthy to have intentional weight loss. Your doctor is prescribing you an eating disorder. The science doesn't exist. I get very angry when people start promoting diets in their lives. You're being a racist when you start promoting weight loss. It's hurting people and it's hurting me. Hello YouTube and welcome to the Body Honesty Project. My name is Lydia and today I have quite the doozy for you. Now I sincerely hope that everyone is having a great day and is in a great mood because I'm about to ruin it. This TikTok is by far the most offensive and dangerous TikTok I have ever seen come out of the fat acceptance community and I am not kidding. It's three minutes long and pretty much every single word that this woman says is offensive. So I hope you're in the mood to get your feathers ruffled because this is gonna be a rough one. So why don't we just jump right on in? Listen, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. And diet culture is bullshit. Your doctor's telling you to put you on a diet to lose weight for your health. It's not healthy to lose weight. It's not healthy to have intentional weight loss. Your doctor's lying to you. The stuff that you're seeing around feeling better is temporary. It's literally temporary. It's your body saying, holy shit, we're in a famine. And now we have all this adrenaline to keep you alive. And then you go and binge on food because you've restricted. Your doctor is prescribing you an eating disorder. Ask your doctor if there is a peer reviewed journal article that you can look at that says sustained weight loss can happen two to five years out after the initial dieting. Ask them for that, for that journal article. And you know what you're going to hear? It doesn't exist. The science doesn't exist. I have a master's degree in this. I get very angry when people start promoting diets in their lives. And I have to go. I can't be around it. I am a fat person and you're attacking me by opening your mouth and saying shitty things about your fat body. Be careful on what you say and what you are perpetuating because it's all tied to racism and eugenics. You're being a racist when you start promoting weight loss. I said what I said, it's the truth. Stop it right now. If you care about me, if you care about fat people, if you care about yourself, you will stop. You will stop right now. I had to leave alive this morning because they're all talking about diets and, oh, you got to do what you got to do. And, and you got to listen to your doc. Your doctor is lying. But you don't question it because they got the white coat. They know, they must know. No, the diet culture informs doctors, not the other way around, y'all. Think about what you're contributing to. It's hurting people and it's hurting me. Did that make you mad? Because it certainly made me mad the first time I saw it. There is so much wrong with this TikTok. There are so many points that we need to debunk. So why don't we start at the very beginning when she says this. It's not healthy to lose weight. It's not healthy to have intentional weight loss. Says who? Only the members of the fat acceptance community have this speaking point that it is not healthy to lose weight. What about the 200 diseases that are related to obesity? What about diabetes and cancers and heart disease? What about joint pain? What about sleep apnea? There's so many, many health risks that come with being obese. Ask any doctor and they will tell you that. Nobody is forcing this woman to lose weight. 
If she wants to be fat, fine, be fat. But why does she need to preach to others that it's not healthy to lose weight when it clearly is beneficial to lose weight if you are obese? You might not want to fix your own life, but spouting off and telling others not to fix theirs is dangerous. And then to enforce why it's not healthy to lose weight, she says this. The stuff that you're seeing around feeling better is temporary. Now, I tried to find any scrap of evidence that showed that the adrenal glands secrete when you diet or something like that, but I really couldn't find anything. I mean, maybe this is related to fight, flight, or freeze, those instincts where you do get an adrenaline rush when your body is in a critical life or death situation, but I don't think that gets tripped from dieting. And if it does, you're not doing it right. You don't need to starve yourself to lose weight. You can lose weight and not even feel hungry. Just a modest calorie deficit eating the correct foods. And lots of people feel better when they lose weight. Their symptoms from their ailments diminish or completely distinguish. They have less joint pain. They sleep better. Not to mention more confidence and probably a better sex life too. Telling people that they will not feel better from losing weight is a lie. Now, I'm gonna play a clip of someone who's on a weight loss journey, and I dare you not to cry watching this, because I cried like a baby every single time I watched it. And this clearly shows how someone can feel a lot better after losing weight. I've been scared to even attempt what I'm about to share with you. There were several moments where I almost stopped filming because I was too afraid to fail in front of you. I had basically given up on myself and accepted the fact that I was going to be fat forever and that's just how it was. 16 weeks ago I decided to give my life one final shot and I started a weight loss TikTok to share my journey. I'm doing things now that I never thought were going to be possible again for me. Things I took for granted like being able to tie my own shoes. I'm telling you this because I want you to know that I know what it feels like to write yourself off as a lost cause. I'm also telling you this because I don't ever want you to give up on yourself like I did. We are worth it. One day at a time. Wasn't that absolutely beautiful? I mean, if, if this man didn't start a weight loss journey, he never would have been able to tie his shoes. How can you not say that he doesn't feel better now that he's lost weight and he feels that he can do it and he's going to succeed in this journey? Why are we stealing potential joy from people by trying to convince them that they can't get any better? I'm certainly glad that he didn't see this TikTok and decide not to lose weight because maybe he never would be able to tie his shoes. Then to support her argument that losing weight is not healthy, she says this. Your doctor is prescribing you an eating disorder. And my response to that is, what do you have now? Because if you are morbidly obese, you already have an eating disorder, binge eating disorder. Yes, overly restricting your calories could result in an eating disorder, but that's why we take the steps ahead of time to mitigate the situation. See a nutritionist, talk to an obesity doctor, set up a plan that has gradually decreasing your calories. Don't starve yourself. Starving yourself will lead to binging. I often feel that these fat acceptance people are in a burning building and they refuse to jump out the window into the safety net because they might break a leg. But if they don't jump at all, they're going to get burned alive in the building. So they're telling everybody around them, don't jump, don't jump, it's not safe, while their lives are being taken. Then we get into the tired line that most diets fail anyways and they don't work so there's no point in trying. Ask your doctor. If there is a peer-reviewed journal article that you can look at that says sustained weight loss can happen two to five years out after the initial dieting, ask them for that, for that journal article. And you know what you're going to hear? It doesn't exist. The science doesn't exist. None of the studies show that reducing your calories doesn't produce weight loss, okay? None of them prove that at all. People do often regain weight, but that's because they didn't stick to the plan. It's not the diet's fault, it's the person doing the diet. 
And maybe you selected a diet that was unsustainable, but that doesn't mean to give up. Any sort of addict has to work at how to quit their substance. And different methods might not be effective, but there is no excuse to keep on doing the maladaptive behavior repeatedly because it's just too hard. And there are plenty of publications out there that show that with the right interventions and the right maintenance strategy, people can and do keep the weight off long term. I know this is anecdotal, but I personally know several people that have lost a lot of weight and kept it off from over five years. And it's these people that are never part of any sort of study that we don't have the numbers on. It is possible. To give her some credibility, she said this. I have a master's degree in this. No, you don't. Your master's is in social justice. How does a degree in social justice give you the required education to dole out health advice? Your education is completely unrelated to the ill effects of obesity on health. And in fact, your education is deterring people from changing their health. I don't think that this credential gives her any license to speak in this area. The master's degree means nothing. Then staying true to the fat acceptance script, she sees any talk about weight loss as a personal attack on her. I am a fat person and you're attacking me by opening your mouth and saying shitty things about your fat body. I often wonder if these people listen to themselves speak. Like, why is it a personal attack on her for someone else to talk about themselves? It's not. And if she truly believes that being fat is fine, someone else talking about weight loss should not bother her. People are entitled to make choices that affect their lives that don't have any relation to yours. I know personally that I only ever feel bad that someone else is doing something that I'm not doing if I feel like I should be doing it as well. So for example, if I was in school and I had a test and my friend was at home studying but I decided to go out, then I might feel guilty because I'd be like, uh, I probably should be studying. But if I had studied earlier and I felt prepared for the test already, I wouldn't feel guilty at all. The reason why she's so upset is because she knows deep down that she should be losing weight and when other people start to lose weight, she feels bad about herself. She needs to address that. It's not fat phobia, honey, it's guilt. You feel guilty that you're not doing the things that you should be doing. And of course, an angry fat acceptance TikTok wouldn't be complete unless they mentioned the R word. Cause it's all tied to racism and eugenics. You're being a racist when you start promoting weight loss. I am getting so sick of this talking point. It's not the same. First of all, it's racist AF to be saying that the BMI is racist. Because that says that just because someone's skin is different, that their body composition is also drastically different than someone else. And that just isn't true. Yes, certain races have a little more muscle or a little less muscle than others naturally, but we're not that different. That's why there's a range in the BMI. Maybe certain races fall at the bottom of the range and maybe certain races fall at the top of the range, but we're not so different that medical science regarding weight does not apply to all of us. There is a little bit of overlap between fat phobia and racism, but to me, it's only the small stuff. The things like colors not matching and sizes not being available. The inconveniences, but not the heavy stuff. Racism is deliberate exclusion, whereas fat phobia is the absence of inclusion. The difference between, oh, I'm so sorry that you don't fit in our booth versus get the hell out of my restaurant. They're not the same. And even if fat phobia was rooted in racism, why does it matter? Because the science exists that backs it up that it's unhealthy. If Hitler created the Pythagorean theorem, you know, that old uh, right angle triangle, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If it was called Hitler's theorem and not the Pythagorean theorem, would it make it any less correct? He was a bad man, but bad people can do good things too. I also want to ask, how can it be rooted in racism when the Greeks and the Chinese have documentation long before that about the dangers of obesity, when their race was the only race that was around them? It couldn't be racist. And if the roots of a cause really do matter, remember, 
fat acceptance is based in fat fetishization. And if we get into the eugenics part of it, that means that they are associating their fatness as themselves and not a part of themselves, which isn't true. No one is trying to eradicate you. They're trying to eradicate obesity. If a person with cancer gets their tumor removed, does that mean that we're performing eugenics on people with cancer? Or are we removing the harmful thing from the person so that they no longer have cancer? The fat is the harmful thing. Nobody is doing eugenics on you. They're trying to help save your life. Then, of course, she has to blame the doctors. Your doctor's lying! But you don't question it because they got the white coat. They know. They must know. I don't know about you, but I believe my doctor because of her education and her experience, not the white coat. This woman has neither education nor experience. So why the hell should I listen to her? Your doctor is not lying to you. If your doctor thinks that your weight is a health risk or you have problems because of your weight, listen to them. They know better than you. This is such a dangerous message to go and tell people to stop listening to their doctors. The doctors are not lying. This woman is. And it gets worse. This is where she thinks that the doctors get their knowledge from. No, the diet culture informs doctors, not the other way around, y'all. And that is absolutely ridiculous. The doctors do not get their information from diet culture. Yes, diet culture sponges off of people's insecurities. They have these bogus plans and products that promise quick and easy weight loss, and that is just not the case. The only way to lose weight in a consistent manner is to do it with a slow and steady approach, a lifestyle modification. But just because diet culture is bad, it does not mean that what the doctors are saying is incorrect. A lot of people will say that the bottled water industry is bad. It's bad for the environment with all the plastic bottles. They mark up something that should be virtually free and charge us $4 a bottle for it, plus all the excess garbage. But the bottled water companies being evil does not mean that a doctor telling you to drink water is wrong. I don't know why we can't see the forest from the trees here. Then we get to the end and she says this. Think about what you're contributing to. It's hurting people and it's hurting me. And to that, I say, get therapy. And I don't mean that in a condescending way. I go to therapy because every now and then I need some help extracting my head from my ass. She shouldn't be this hurt and upset. She needs help. And I'm showing you this video today because I want you to see what happens when people fall deep into fat acceptance. It's not just being fat. It's becoming angry and hating people that want to change their lives, hating people that lose weight, spouting lots and lots of misinformation and calling people racists just because they believe in maintaining a healthy body. This doesn't look like a fun and happy life. This looks like an angry, bitter life. Who wants to sign up for that? Well, we've reached the end. And like I said at the beginning, this today was the most offensive fat acceptance TikTok I personally have ever seen. If any of you have seen anything worse than this, please send me a link because I would love to check it out. I sincerely hope that I did not ruin your day or boil your blood too much, but I really felt that this TikTok was worth sharing. So until next time, stay body positive, but also body honest. Thank you.